Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? We ready to worship the Lord together? Can we all stand? Worship the Lord with us. Father, Lord, we love you, Lord. We love you, God. We worship you tonight, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Cause your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Cause your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. And higher than the mountains, higher than the mountains that I. Stronger than the power of the grave Constant in the trial and the chain This one thing remains One thing, one thing remains Your love never fails and never gives up Never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up. Never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up. Never runs out on me. Your love. Sing out your love never fails. Your love never fails and never gives up. Never runs out on me. Never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. And on and on and on. On and on and on and on it goes. Yes, it does. Lord, we love you tonight. 
Lord, we love you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. It's a good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good Father. Here you are, here you are, and I'm the 
trust in you tonight, Lord, because you're a good, good father. just do that tonight let's just lift our hands toward him tonight father we just surrender our will our ways our wants our desires we surrender the good the bad the ugly we surrender all to you tonight God and so God we just release it into your care into your life God the things of joy and the things of displeasure the things that we love and the things that we detest. God, we just give it all to you tonight and we cast it upon you for we know that you really are a good, good father. Hallelujah. And we thank you tonight, God, that you love us and you have your best interest at heart. And God, we know that we can trust you with our lives. And so tonight, we just climb this mountain. We just release it all to you and we give it to you tonight. And we believe you that you're taking and making all things work together for our good. In Jesus' name and amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a good praise this evening.
me just say as our uh, ushers are getting ready to serve, thank you for uh, being here tonight. And I know that we've had a lengthy weekend, and most of you that are here tonight were here throughout the weekend. And uh, I appreciate you being here tonight in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And I believe that if, if we don't have it, we will have it. Um, Miss uh, Shannon, can you help me? Are the, the services up yet? Okay. So we're still working on those, but you can get those on the website. And uh, be sure if you weren't here or if you were, just get those and get involved in your spirit and let it minister to you. Amen. Praise God. So tonight we want to bless the Lord in our giving. And so if you've uh, already uh, purposed in your heart to give, we want you to prepare now for your giving. And let's just give that with a joyful heart this evening. Amen. Praise God. Father, thank you tonight for your uh, presence. Thank you for the worship. We thank you for the word. And we thank you for what you're doing in this house. And God, to be able to reach beyond us, we give you thanks for that. I thank you for people that have a heart to go beyond themselves and go beyond the four walls of this building. And, and God, we give you praise and thanks for the vision that you've placed over this house to go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth and be a multi-generational church. And we give you thanks and praise for that vision and thank you for people that have invested in the vision. We give you praise and thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, God bless you. Praise God. seated y'all let me know if you need bigger bags okay, I'll get you some okay all right <laughs> all right praise God amen all right uh, this Sunday wow everything's going on this month I told you it's going to be busy this Sunday uh, Dwayne Deskins will be with us We'll be uh, doing our book launch with him. Hope is rising. Has anybody read the book? Amen. Is it all right? Amen. Amen. Has anybody been blessed? We've uh, said as a staff for a long time that God's done some great things in this house. We just didn't know do a good job at sharing it. And so we was excited about this opportunity and feel, felt like that it was a great opportunity, even though that it was in a limited form, to be able to uh, share testimonies of people that you sat with every Sunday and probably never known their story. Amen. But it is uh, a great story that many have shared, and, and thank God for those who have shared their story that, to bring hope to other people. And uh, so I am uh, looking forward to Sunday's service, and um, we will be uh, sharing the word. Dwayne, uh, Pastor Dwayne will be with us and sharing the word on Sunday morning, be sharing about the book as well. We'll be uh, at that time, if at the books that you received, you had one of these, I trust that you're praying over uh, what your sponsorship would look like that is one book a month or if it is 25 books a month or 50 books a month you can do 50 books we'll let you okay and uh, but however many that is I don't want to spend a lot of time because most of you have been here to hear it but we will be able to send out that amount of books whatever is sponsored we'll send out every month uh, until we reach our goal of reaching our region our area with this book and uh, seeing people's lives find hope amen praise God and so uh, who who uh, read the book and was just um, blessed by it buddy yeah. sister Patty could you just come and just say something about the book for me Well, 
I remember all the stories. But what I guess, just knowing how strong the Lord is and how he can, he can work in our hearts if we just give him the opportunity. He's always there. And I just thought if people would read the book, you know, a prepared mind makes it easy to believe. And there's enough sin in this, in this area that if people will actually pick the book up and, and, and read it, God will touch their hearts. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It touches people's hearts. And so I'm looking forward to people getting it, and hopefully they'll read it. So I guess we need to be praying that the Holy Spirit will deal with people's lives. But, you know, it also shows the power of God. How much, you know, you can be so wretched. You know, you can just be so low. But God can lift you up. And though some of us may not have a story like they did, God changed our heart. You know, God changed our heart. And, and it just gives me hope. It just gives me hope. And there's people that I know I want to have that book. Thank you, Sister Patty. Amen. Amen. And so let's just pray right now that God will prepare the hearts of the people. Amen? Let's just pray that. Father, as we just send out these books, even before we send them out, we just pray that you would send ministering angels. God, that you would prepare the hearts of the people. God, that it would go to the right people at the right place at the right time. And God, that they would not just be uh, put to the side. It would not just be put in the trash. It wouldn't be put on a coffee table. But God, that the Holy Spirit would just draw as a magnetic force to them to read this message and stories of hope. Father, we just come into agreement together for this tonight. We believe you, God, that you're going to send them to the right people at the right place at the right time. Their hearts will be open to it. And God, hear what you have to say and what you've done in others. Let faith arise in their heart to believe that you can also do it for them. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? Sure. So, interesting story just from today. I'm really excited that I get to share this. Um, I had actually given a book to a friend of mine uh, that I do some business networking with. We've had some interesting conversations in the past. He is, um, I think where he's from exactly. Some, it, well, not he personally. He, he grew up in the Ashland, Kentucky area, but his family is from the Middle East, and he is a Muslim. And uh, so we've had some pretty interesting conversations. Uh, nothing, you know not debating each other or anything, but just learning a little bit about each other's faith and some of the similarities and differences. Uh, and I've always been praying for him, you know, that I would have an opportunity to kind of share the gospel with him. And so um, I took one of those books and gave it to him. And uh, he came to me today, and he had already read the whole thing. And, I mean, just the look on his face, I mean, you could just see it was, it was a Holy Ghost confusion. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, he just, he, you could just see he was just looking at me weird, and he, he, he's mentioned several things to me before, just, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but just, he had said some kind things to me, just complimenting me, and um, so I, I always appreciated that, but then he, the thing that he related today is, now I know where it comes from, amen? I mean, that, that was just exciting to me, so anyway, that, that's it. Amen, that is great. Praise God, praise God. Anybody else? minute share all right Rick did you read it or did Brenda read it to you all right <laughs> praise God all right anybody else amen I know that it's going to be a blessing I know that and that's awesome thank you for sharing that tonight and and I feel like that's right on point. You know, we need to, Sister Patty pointed out, let's pray and continue to pray. God, just to make it magnetic, make it they can't put it down. I believe if they'll read a little bit, they'll read the whole thing. Amen. And so let's just pray and then and uh, to see where it came from. <laughs> that's awesome. Amen. Well, hallelujah. 
Well, everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a something that God's done for them. I, I'm sure tonight that if we were to able to take the time, that everyone here could could preach a message or two about something that God has done for them, that God has made a way, that God has provided, God has worked something out, that that sometimes it isn't in the working out of a thing that that we rejoice over as much as it is that he brought us through a thing and uh, that he preserved us, that he made a way somehow for us. And so uh, tonight I, I just want to uh, talk to you for a few moments. I wanted to, to do that. Let me say this and then I'll get my message, okay? Uh, I, I, I want you to help me in, um, in social media. Uh, just encouraging folks to be with us this Sunday, okay? And so if you have read the book, and I'm not asking you for any hype or any of that, but if you've read the book, it's been a blessing to you. If it's helped you, if it's ministered to you, you think it'll be a help to somebody else, get on Facebook, take a picture of it, do whatever you need to do, and invite people to come to the service on Sunday morning. And um, whatever books we purchase on Sunday morning, the uh, publisher is going to match that. Amen? And so we'll be able to give books out in, 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 in that fashion. So uh, I'm believing God for souls to be saved on Sunday morning. And I also on Sunday evening, uh, not only because he's coming for such a long way, he's not coming from Washington, D.C. He's coming from Washington State. All right, so he's flying in here. So we're going to, uh, not just only because of that, but I just have, I feel a sense in uh, my spirit that he has something that we need in the house. And so uh, I'm going to have it, we're going to have him stay for Sunday night, and we're going to do that at 6 o'clock, okay? And uh, so that's going to be good. But help me with that, and let's just encourage. It's one thing if pastor gets on there and says it's a great book. It's another thing when people, amen, multiple people reach out and tell people it's wonderful all right so exodus chapter 14 and verse 14 and 15 exodus 14 14 and 15 since you have been so gracious and kind and being here these multiple services the last few days i'm going to uh tell you something and then i'm gonna let you go home Okay, Exodus chapter 14 and verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Amen. I want to talk to you tonight about moving forward moving forward on the night of the Passover Israel left Egypt and Pharaoh's anger was kindled against them he decided to pursue them and this is where this text was written or we find the children of Israel in this text they are pinned up against the Red Sea with the Egyptian army behind them there's no way that they can cross the Red Sea. There is no way that they can turn back and, and be able to win the fight against the Egyptian army. The Red Sea was in front of Israel representing their future. The Egyptian army was behind them representing their past. The question is, ha have you ever been in a place in your life where your future was just as scary as your past. Just as scary as your past. I'm talking about being trapped in a place where it seems that you cannot go forward, but you not dare go backward. You, you, you're in this place. I know that all of us have gone through difficult times I'm sure that all of us could find something as I said to tell our story to tell a testimony of what God has brought us through or brought us out of and yes we've all been there we've all been through some stuff which has been scary has been painful 
has been difficult, has been uncertain, but even now, every now and then, it is wonderful to be able to look back over your past and understand that you have been through some stuff, but God has also brought you through it. That, that had it not been for the Lord on our side, tell me where would we be? If it wasn't for him, but thank God he's brought us through. He's delivered us. Somehow we've survived. Huh? Somehow we've made it. Somehow, amen, we have been able to go through difficult. I mean, I'm not talking about bad hair day. I'm talking about difficult situations. And we look back over it and somebody asks us, how did you make it? And, and we really can't tell them. We can't really pinpoint it. We can't say, well, I figured it out. We can't say, well, it was because of my brilliancy. We, we can't say it was because of this or that. All we can say is to God be the glory. Because if it had not been really for him on my side, amen, the enemy would have devoured me. Praise God. And we thank him for that tonight. But the thing that, it, that comes to us is this, the, the, the difficult times, the, the things that we don't understand, the, re, the reasoning behind all that we go through, we, we don't comprehend. But one thing we do know is that we are stronger and we are wiser and we are, we are more than likely better than we were before we went through the difficulty or the struggle but it's hard to look at our future and see it is just as difficult or even worse than what our past has been it is scary to look ahead and to see that it's going to be filled with just as much difficulty or perhaps greater difficulty perhaps more impossibilities or hardships or experiences than even our past has been that's where Job was whenever he said he said I have looked for the Lord and I cannot find him he said I looked behind me and he wasn't there he said I looked to the right and he wasn't there he said I looked ahead of me and I could not find him but he said he was at work on my left, but I perceived it not. He had left is the weak form. The right is the place of authority. That's the reason Jesus is sitting on the right hand of Father God. That's, it's where authority is. Right hand is that of power and authority. But now we see that Job in his difficult time, he looks at it and he says, I've looked in my past and it was scary. But he said, I looked to the right and to the left and I looked before me and it looked like a nightmare and I couldn't find God anywhere. But he said, I looked again on my left and he was at work, but I perceived him not. You see, sometimes we got to look into our lives and we start saying, God, where are you? And why isn't this? And how come that? But the reality of it is when it feels like he is not anywhere to be found, he may not be showing himself in power. He may not be showing himself in that right hand of authority. But be sure that God is always at work. He is always moving. He is always at work. Every time in the scripture you find God, you find him that he's not uh, standing still. He's a God that is in motion. He is always moving and he is moving on our behalf. And so the left hand says that he's doing it in a private place, in a secret place. That is when nobody can see that you're blessed. When nobody can see that, that God is working for you. When, when he's working on your right hand, he, he, they say, wow, you're favored of the Father. Wow, you've got all of these blessings. We, we sing songs. He's a good, good dad, right? A good, good father. And, and that's when he's on the right hand side. But on the left hand side, we don't see and it doesn't look like we're so blessed Job huh 
seven sons and three daughters. A storm comes through and they're all destroyed in one day. It doesn't look good. Amen. Before one reporter after another, before one could leave, another would come. Your children are dead. Your, your animals are all gone. Your livelihood is taken. And all that remained was a bitter, angry wife that said, why don't you just curse God and die? You've served him, Job. You've worshipped him. Look behind you. What has it produced in your life? Look at us, where we are at. Our house is gone. Our children children are gone we have nothing of value that is left it was on the left hand of God life left side of Job that Job found God and sometimes in our life we cannot perceive that God is working we don't feel like singing he's a good good father it doesn't look like to those around him us that we are highly favored of the father but we know because it isn't about what we see or what we feel it's about knowing our relationship with God that he is working all things for our good and his glory that even when we cannot see him when it looks scary behind us with the Egyptian army that's rushing up against us and the Red Sea of impossibility is before us and we cannot find God amen but the reality of it is, what do you do when you've got the Egyptian army behind you, the Red Sea of impossibility before you, and you can't find God? You just keep moving forward with what he told you to do. You don't quit. You don't throw in the towel. You don't give up. You don't stand still because the enemy keeps on coming. But you see, when we move forward, God is going to action. The movement, movement is faith. Amen. It takes no faith to set down. It takes no faith to stay where you are. It takes faith to move. And whenever you move, you are insecure. The time that the first, when you pick up your foot to begin to move forward is when you're most vulnerable. Because when you've got both feet planted, then people, people can push you. Things can come against you, but you've got your feet planted. But the moment that you pick up your foot, you're out of balance. You're unstable. And see, seemingly anything that comes against you can be the thing that takes you out. And the enemy will come to your mind to try to get you to stay where you are. Keep your feet planted. This is good enough after all. You've come far enough after all. Just hold on after all. But no, no, no. He, whenever the enemy comes against you, when the adversary is rushing behind you and impossibility is staring you in the face, you don't dare cower down. Stay where you are. You pick up your foot of faith and begin to move forward and when you do it is an action that will draw God to where you are <coughs> for Israel if they had turned to their past they had two options they had either bondage or death if they went if they turned to their past they would have uh, lived the rest of their lives of slaves they would have been immediately murdered but if they turned to their future they only had one option and that was to drown by death or death by drowning got it right the second time the sea would have swallowed them up so they could go back and they couldn't go forward. Their future was just as scary as their past. In the midst of Israel's dilemma, God spoke this word to them. He gave them this instruction that we read here tonight. He said he would fight their battle. He told them that they were to do nothing except one thing and that one thing was they were to move forward amen hold your peace 
and Moses tell them, move forward. That's all you've got to do. That's all you've got to do. Don't allow fear to paralyze you. Don't allow your past to come up and overwhelm you. And don't allow the future of uncertainty to stop you. Just tell them, move forward. Amen. We all know that there are some battles in our life that we must engage in. Amen. We have to fight and be involved. As we battle, God comes along and he gets involved in the fight with us. In other words, he fights along or with us. But there are other battles that God simply will not fight along with us. And these are the battles that God must fight for us. Amen. These are the battles that are not by might, nor are they by power, but they are by the Spirit of the Lord. They were beyond our connections. They were beyond our resources, our wisdom. We were powerless to fight them, but the Holy Spirit would come and fight for us. They are just too big and too difficult, but the Lord says if you will just take a step forward, if you will just keep following the command that I have given you, then you will not have to fight this battle. I will fight it for you. God will not do his part unless we do our part. So what is our part? To fully understand what our part is, we need to take a closer look at what God told Israel. He told them to hold their peace and he would fight for them. But his instructions didn't end there. He told them that they must move forward. Moving forward, that seems so simple. It seems so insignificant. But I declare to you tonight that moving forward is a faith, an action step of faith. It is something that releases in our life because it takes no faith to stay where we are, but it takes faith to step into uncertainty. And the Red Sea was uncertain. Amen. Israel had no guarantee that the Red Sea would open up. I would submit to you that, that I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 just, I just don't. I don't know. But I haven't heard of history nor in the Bible where that the, a sea had ever opened up before. So what even would make them think that the thing would open up? I, I would submit to you that they didn't even have it in their mind. We, on this side of the story, read the story and know what happens. But can you imagine Israel, God saying, this is what you need to do. You just hold your peace, don't be talking about it, and just move forward. And all of the time, they're getting closer and closer to the brink of an ocean, of a sea. Amen? And all they're hearing is, move forward. But I can see them as they're saying, God, it, it, there's just a few more steps. It's just about 20 more steps. And those waves are rolling in. And God says, move forward. And I, I, you know, and I'm just saying what I'd be, you know, I, I don't know, maybe Moses was all that in a bag of chips. But, but me, I would be saying, God, you know what, it, it's only 10 more feet now. And, 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 and I can feel that water, it, it's getting closer. I can, it, can feel it hitting my face. And God said, just hold your peace and move forward. <laughs> Amen. Can you imagine the look on their face? Whenever Moses took that rod and struck that water and the waters begin to roll back. <coughs> because they had moved forward. They didn't know. I believe that they were probably mesmerized. Because they didn't know. All they knew was they were being obedient. 
all they knew was is that they were doing this simple, insignificant, crazy thing that, that the enemy was pushing them, but yet the, the, before them was this uncertainty, but all they were doing was moving forward. But in their act of obedience, God did something that day. What did he do? He split uncertainty down the middle, and he put a highway into the place that he desired for them to go. I just want to say to you tonight that sometimes it's not the great super duper things. Sometimes it isn't getting on a plane and going to the other side of the nations. Sometimes it isn't a giving a thousand dollars. Sometimes it isn't all of the things we think of and are so significant. Sometimes it is simple as listening to the voice of God that says move forward. Amen. Just move forward. And when we do that in faithfulness, those little acts of faithfulness, can you imagine the next time they came back and the Bible said that this time, you know, they had a little confidence. It wasn't Moses' rod, but it was the priest, right? And this time they said, God did it before. Maybe he'll do it again. But something tells me that, you know, the rod can go out and go before Moses. But this time this, it did not part until their feet went into the water. But when their feet went into the water, that same God that rolled the waters back before came and began to roll the waters of uncertainty back once again for them. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm telling you tonight that sometimes God will do it before you get to it. But other times you've got to take a chance in getting your feet wet. Sometimes you've got to say, God, whatever it takes, I'm willing to do it I know that you said move forward and so forward I will go if it has if I have to get wet if I have to look crazy it's all right I'm just going to obey your voice I'm going to move forward <laughs> They probably never entered their minds that that sea was going to part Sometimes we just have to move forward with no guarantees Amen. I've told you before, and I know I'd probably tell you over and over, and thank God we don't have religious spirits or probably get mad at me, but faith is spelled R-I-S-K. Amen. Because it's a risk. There's no guarantee. If there was a guarantee, it would not need faith. But because there's no guarantee, now I have to step out in faith and risk looking foolish obeying this simple word move forward <laughs> amen we just have to move forward because God said to do it it's our part in the miracle is to move forward to be obedient sometimes in my life I've had to determine that I'd rather die going forward than I would die turning back I'd rather die facing an unfamiliarity of the Red Sea than I would die in the familiarity of Egypt's bondage I'd rather die going forward than going backward sometimes you the greatest thing that you can do in your life is just Keep going forward. Keep moving forward. Putting one foot in front of the other. Keep pressing on. Sometimes the greatest thing that you can do to win is move forward. Don't stop. Don't get distracted. Don't get discouraged. Just keep moving forward. Don't let fear paralyze you. You've heard the expression deer in the headlights. That deer is frozen. It is paralyzed by fear. And the thing that he could outrun is now able to take him out because he's paralyzed by fear. What are you saying? I'm saying that many times the thing we could overcome can take us out because we're paralyzed by the fear. So don't be paralyzed, but keep 
Keep going forward. Keep believing in the future. Keep shaking off and keep moving forward into what God has ordained for your life. David had a scary past, didn't he? His past, there was a lion. His past, there was a bear. But now the lion and the bear, as scary as it was, it was not as scary as his future. For in his future stood not a bear or a lion, but a Goliath. He had five other brothers. He was large in stature. He was intimidating and the roar of his voice would try to paralyze. In fact, it had paralyzed a whole army with just his voice and his stature. But a little shepherd boy that had been through some things, had, had been through a lion fight, and had been through a bear wrestling match. He, he came into his now and he looked pat back and he seen as scary as his past was. He seen this Goliath, this giant, this, this warrior that was standing before him. And so what did he do? As scary as his past was, he did what any warrior would do. He ran into his future. He ran into his future. Don't ever allow your enemy to intimidate you to cower back. If you're going to run, run into your future. <clears throat> if you're going to move, don't move side to side or backwards, but always move forward. Keep pushing forward because you already know what's on the right and what's on the left. You've been there and done that. You've already got two t-shirts from what's behind you, but you don't know what is in your future. Amen. Am I making sense to anybody? You see, David ran into his future because he knew he knew how God worked. He didn't know how he was going to work, but he knew how God worked. You understand what I'm saying? He, he went and grabbed hold of the lion, and the, when he grabbed hold of the lion, he, he, the, the anointing came on him and he slew it. He, he grabbed hold of the bear, and when he did, God's power graced him to be able to take the lion out. And so he runs into his future where he can get a, his hands on his future. <coughs> where he can get his hands on this giant because he knew that if he engaged him that the anointing would come on him. Something in him because of his past told him if you'll just move forward. <coughs> if you'll just move forward then the anointing will come upon you when you engage him. You see, I believe tonight that the reason that we don't enjoy the presence and the anointing of the Lord as much as we would love to is because we're not moving forward. You don't need an anointing to stay where you are. You need an anointing to kill Goliaths and giants that are in your future. You need an anointing to split the Red Sea. You need an anointing to overcome the uncertainty. And so when we take that step of faith in moving forward, that's when the anointing comes. And so if you're tired of the atmosphere, you're tired of the anointing, if you're tired of the glory, whatever you want to call it, of where you are and that level that it is at, then just move forward. And when you're moving forward, there's going, it demands that there is a fresh anointing come upon your life. It demands that there is a fresh glory that comes upon your life. Why? Because you're going into something you have never gone into before. And so our text is proof positive that God fights for those who move forward. God fights for those who keep pressing on. His anointing, his blessing, his favor, even the future 
may be scary, it may look hopeless, it may be dark, it may seem impossible, but God fights for those who move forward. Sometimes you just have to keep swinging the axe. Amen. Sometimes you just got to, when you don't know what to do, you just do what you know to do. Amen. And you just keep swinging that axe of faith. You just keep on moving forward. You just keep on working that thing. You keep on doing what you know to do when you don't know what to do. Amen. And I promise you, if you keep swinging that axe, that tree's going to fall. That tree's going to fall. That thing that stands in your way is going to come down. Why? Because God will fight for you. God fights for those who are moving forward. Why? Because when you're moving forward, I don't want to go through the, the example again, but when you're moving forward, it is when you are most vulnerable. And God says, I'll not let anything take you out when you're being obedient to me. I'm going to take care of you. You just keep moving forward and I will fight for you. Glory to God. You just have to keep on swinging, keep on believing, keep on moving forward. And as you do, what do you mean, Pastor? Keep on reading the Word. Keep on praying. Keep on being in the house of the Lord. Keep on being faithful of worshiping God and blessing His name. Keep on doing what you know to do. And keep on moving forward. And as you do, that tree's going to fall and God's going to split the Red Sea. And He's going to become your provision. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so that's what I come to tell you tonight. Just move forward. Tell your neighbor, just move forward. <clears throat> and just moving forward is a, seems so childish, doesn't it? But God made it so simple so we couldn't mess it up. Amen. And so tonight, I just want to say, just keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Keep foot, putting one foot in front of the other. Keep on loving God. Keep on worshiping. Keep on reading. Keep on praying. Keep on giving God your glory and praise and honor. Keep on being faithful to the house of the Lord. Just keep moving forward. And in that act of faithfulness, God will fight for you. Glory to God. Amen. Rob, I'm done, son. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Does this help anybody tonight? <laughs> Praise God. I know it's so simple. It's what I thought, too. But it's just what's in my heart right now. Keep moving forward. Don't get distracted. Don't, don't get caught up on what you see. Just keep on doing what God told you to do. And being in that act of faithfulness, God is going to fight your battles. He'll silence your enemies. He'll split the Red Sea. He'll conquer the giant. Whatever it is, he will take you to where he promised. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand tonight, please. Amen. So, Father, I thank you tonight. Thank you for simplicity of your word. I, I just pray tonight, God, that it <clears throat> finds us where we are. That you will just minister to us in these moments, God. For somebody tonight, this simple word has been powerful in their heart giving direction I pray tonight God that we will just act upon it God that you will just help us hallelujah God somebody that's being distracted by all of the uncertainty and all of the, the battle and all of the struggle and the fighting and all of the waves that are rolling but I pray tonight God that they just be obedient and just keep moving forward and allow you to fight the fight Lord, we don't need to be concerned about the fight. We just need to be concerned about being obedient. And you'll take care of the rest. 
Hallelujah. So whoever I've been sent to tonight, God, let their hearts be open and receive it with a yes tonight. God, we give you praise and thanks for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and sing a song. Let's just worship a moment. else wants prayer just come tonight we'll pray with you tonight okay
Thank you, Father. As we move, you war. As we move, you work. As we move, God, you're faithful to open red seas and conquer giants for us. And so I thank you that you're at work. And God, I thank you that as we move forward, God, you are doing exceedingly abundantly above all that we are able to ask or even think. And we give you praise and thanks for this in the matchless name of Jesus. And amen. Amen. Praise God. God's good, isn't he? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I just believe he's at work on our behalf. Amen. Well, as I promised, I told you something. Now I'm going to let you go home. All right. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord tonight. Shake hands with some folks before you leave. Make sure that uh, you get on with, uh, what is it, Facebook, Twitter, Tell them about our book, okay? And tag the tab, okay? Tag the tab. Love you. See you Sunday.